Good morning. Good morning. It's a joy to be with you on this first Sunday after Christmas, which also, uh, by virtue of the calendar date, happens to be the day for St. John, the Apostle and Evangelist. Our scripture readings today reflect that church calendar observance. Uh, we have a couple of announcements and reminders for you as we gather for worship here at Hanover Lutheran Church. We have one additional day of scheduled worship services for Hanover in 2020. That will be Christmas, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve service. And that's 5 p.m. this coming Thursday. I invite you to join us at Babel for that communion service on New Year's Eve. Also, next Sunday, we will have installation of officers in our Sunday morning worship services. Uh, both services will install those who are at that particular service. We have uh, uh, anyone else serving on the board that's present also will go through the, the right of installation. A couple other uh, reminders for you. One of them is that the Christmas ornaments have arrived for the youth, and if you desire one of those, you certainly go ahead and pick it up. Um, the 175th anniversary cookbook that arrived. All kinds of things for the 175th anniversary of Hanover taking place. And then two other things about today's worship schedule. The Sunday school children's living nativity had been scheduled for Christmas Eve, but because of the weather, cold conditions that were extant, we rescheduled that to occur this morning at 10 here in the church proper. And so the Sunday School Children's Living Nativity will be part of our schedule today. Because of that, we do not have adult Bible study over in the Activity Center. We'll be here in the nave for the Sunday School Children's Program. And that's at 9. Did I say 10? Pay no attention to what I say. Listen to what I mean. <laughs> no, that's, that's right. I, my brain sometimes just picks up times and puts them where they go and it messes up the artist all the time. He's got a schedule he's on and I try to change it without authorization. So. Thank you. I appreciate that very much, Ken. Yes, 9 a.m. So those of you who are beginning to panic can stop. If you have other reasons to panic, stop that too. Because the same God who's in charge of our morning schedule is in charge of each day of our life. We often overlook that, and sometimes it's a challenge when he does things we don't plan on, right? But he plans on that. That's the key. The other thing is that we do have a special voters meeting this morning following the last worship service. And that will be in the activity center. So uh, I encourage you to be involved with that. The purpose of calling the pastor, that will be at 1130. Uh, in the activity center. This moment, we ask you to just take a moment to greet those worshiping with you today. Say hello to those who are you if you would, by turning and waving to them. The order of service we follow is Divine Service Setting 4, which begins on page 203 in Lutheran service book for those who may be following this service in recorded mode. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory, in 367. Because of the nature of uh, this Sunday, St. John the Evangelist Day, we ask you please to rise and face the processional cross as it enters the sanctuary. <laughs>
Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, Be like a bird to your For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have their arrows to the string. If the foundations are destroyed, the Lord is in his holy temple, Yahweh's throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Iron and sulfur and men shall be the portion of their God. For Yahweh is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. And that right shall be all his face. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever.
us, O Lord, and cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed in the doctrine of your blessed apostle and evangelist John, may come to the light of everlasting life, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading appointed for the festival of St. John, Apostle and Evangelist, comes from the revelation of Jesus Christ in the first chapter. John had been put in a form of isolation or banishment. He was exiled to an island off the coast of Asia Minor called Patmos. And while he was on that island, Jesus revealed in a vision to him the things recorded in our text this morning. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. <coughs> He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads, will allow the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and those who keep what is written, for the time is near. John to the seven churches that are in Asia grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings on earth to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. How sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. My heart overflows with a pleasing theme. My tongue is like the man. The epistle reading is from 1 John, chapters 1 and 2. The apostle writes to believers in all places, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life that was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message that we heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, 
and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia of the Holy Gospel.
God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the light of the world. Our text this morning is a portion of the Gospel reading from John 21, as Jesus was discussing with Peter what it was Peter had been called by Jesus to do. You might remember that at the very beginning of the Gospel of John, we're told that Jesus called Peter and Andrew, James and John, to follow him and to become fishers of men. Then at the very end of the Gospel, John tells us that once again they are fishing. And then Jesus gives instructions to Peter and says, Now you are to tend the flock of God. Yeah. And then Peter, after Jesus says to him, Follow me, turns and sees John nearby. And he asks Jesus a question. He said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Well, we, we know a little bit about John the Evangelist. Scripture tells us a variety of things. One of them, of course, is that he had a brother named Andrew. James, rather, and John. Andrew is the brother of Peter. And as we, as we hear these words, what we discover is that they were sons of a man named Zebedee. And they also had a nickname. You might recall on occasion, these two brothers wanted Jesus to send... They give them permission to call fire down from heaven to burn up people who oppose Jesus. You know, John, the apostle of love, wanted permission to call fire down from heaven to burn people up. Because at that point in time, he did not yet understand what God was calling him to do. We're also told that their mother was a close relative, perhaps even a sister of Mary, so these men could have been cousins of Jesus. We don't know for sure. Because we don't need to know that for sure. That isn't part of our assignment. Let me put that another way. God doesn't ask us to know things he doesn't tell us about. He does say, however, we are to continue in his word, John records that for us. Where Jesus, speaking with the disciples in that same upper room, where we're told that John was reclining on Jesus' shoulder, leaning up against him during the Passover meal. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us more than that. But if, in fact, those boys were cousins and grew up, they would have probably eaten Passover meal together as children. We don't know that for sure. What do we know for sure? We know what John tells us. After the disciples had gone fishing and caught a large catch of fish, John specifically says these words. Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may know that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing you may have life in his name. That was the work Jesus gave John to do. As we heard in the first reading for today, later Jesus gave John a special revelation of suffering and rescue, of the struggle of the church of God and the people of God in this world, the struggle between Satan and God outside this world, and the victory that Jesus has already won for you and for me that will transcend this world. John was given a very important task, the task of writing about the light of the world. Our epistle reading for today repeats that very idea, that God sent his son, the light, into the world. And that he came to accomplish a purpose. Jesus had work to do. We just finished our observance, our annual celebration of the birth of the baby in Bethlehem. And the school children are going to tell us about it again. 
at 9 o'clock. And in this process, what we hear again is a message about God completing a task. The baby was born, but the job wasn't done. The shepherds came to see him, but the sheep still needed to be gathered. The magi would come with their gifts for the king, but he still needed to claim his throne. Jesus accomplished that task. He did all the work the Father sent him to do. You remember what he said, hanging on the cross, it is finished. The work Jesus came to do, he completed. Now we have Peter, having just been given instructions from Jesus about work to do. Tend my sheep, feed my lambs, tend my flock. Sees another beside him. And they've been together for you know, a little over three years following Jesus. And he turns to Jesus and says, Lord, what about this man? I don't know if you've ever had this experience. I've seen it in a variety of different ways and different times. You have some children in one place. Sometimes siblings, sometimes students in a classroom, maybe kids on a baseball team, maybe somebody that's got a project to do and their friend is right there. And you say to this one, go pick up your toy. And they say, what about him? Ever had that experience? Have you ever been to that experience? How often don't you and I want to get the focus off of ourselves and what you and I are called to do by talking about someone else. Well, they didn't do it. What about him? Right about now, you should feel a little uncomfortable. Because you see, the word of God and the law of God convict us of our sin. They tell us that God's given tasks to us to do. Let's list them real quickly. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Nope. Coming on that one, don't have one. You shall have no other gods in my presence. Okay, well, that one too. You shall honor your father and mother. You all blew that one too, didn't you? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We didn't get the job done, did we? That is why Jesus had to come. That is what John tells us. As he says that in him, God has made an arrangement. Listen again to these words from today's epistle lesson. Where John tells us this. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we admit that we haven't gotten the job done, we haven't been perfect, we haven't walked before the Lord our God without sin, we haven't loved our neighbors as ourselves, when we admit that to God, He forgives us. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He takes the guilt away. In fact, He's taken your guilt away. Jesus has covered all your sin. God's forgiveness to you is complete. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. The fact that the gift of life was given to you. That the gift of a child would take my place and your place. Born of Mary. A child incarnate. We use that word, Latin <laughs> word a lot. It means God came in the flesh. Or to put it another way, we're going to keep Christ in Christmas, but we also need to keep the Mass in Christmas. 
We need to keep the body of the baby born for us that then grew to be the man who died for us and now calls you and me to receive his body and blood. Remember what John said after Jesus told people, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you will not have life within you. And after that, many of his disciples said, this is a hard saying. Who can handle this? They left him. Jesus turned to the disciples and said, Do you want to leave too? And John tells us the response of the apostles. Peter spoke the word. Lord, to whom shall we go? Where else there can we find anything? Where else could there possibly be that we might find what you've given us? Where can we find the light of the world except in Jesus? Where can we find forgiveness of sins except in Jesus? Nowhere. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of... We sing it in the liturgy again and again, don't we? You have the words of eternal life. What about this man? Jesus is the man to whom you and I turn to look. This is the man born in Bethlehem, grown to a child in Nazareth, then as an adult, leaving Nazareth to bring the message to God's people. And John writes about what Jesus said. John had a vision from Jesus about what Jesus was still doing after he returned to the Father, about what he will do when he comes again at the end of the age. And in that vision, Jesus shows John that everything for us will be okay. Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Or to put it another way, stop asking, what about him? What about her? I'll take care of her. I'll take care of him. What about you? He also promises he will take care of you. He also guarantees he will never leave you or forsake you. What Jesus does is he calls you. He says, as he said to Peter, follow me. He is the one who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He is the light of the world who shines on us the truth of God's love. And the darkness can't overcome it. He is the one who stands in the presence of God and says, these are my sheep. This is my flock. They get my care. They have my protection. I provide a safe and sure place for them to be at all times. No matter how bad it may look to us. No matter how much we might hurt at the moment. The Lord's promise to you is sure and certain. And so we are given work from Jesus. First and foremost, remind you what he told his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. That's work Jesus gave you. He gave you work to do, and part of it is do not be anxious about anything, okay? So we're going to work on that one, right? Don't be anxious about anything. Okay? By the gift of God's Holy Spirit, we do that. We notice we have concerns, but we're not anxious. We're just aware. So we can pray about it because we've been given that work to do as well. Care for one another. Help those in need. We do that work too, don't we? See that God's message is taught to children, that little ones learn of God's love. We do that too, don't we? Yeah. See that those who haven't heard about Jesus yet learn about the light of the world, because otherwise they sit in darkness apart from God. We do that together as a congregation through our relationships with pastors and missionaries that the congregation supports through our work together in our district or the synod together. 
sending people to places where you and I can't go to bring this gospel, we do that work together. The Lord gives you work to do in your own home. We don't all have the same work to do. But each one of us has a task from God that contributes to the good and benefit of others. That's work given you to do by Jesus. Everybody always tries to take that word, work from Jesus, and make it a spiritual thing. Well, it is a spiritual thing. Now, I want you to take the spirit out of your body and do something. Can't do it, can you? Because you're dead. <laughs> so all the things you do are spiritual things. Because God's spirit dwells in you. All the things you do are spiritual things. And if the Lord gives someone else something else to do, your response to that is, hey, what's that got to do with me? I've got work from God. And God promises to bless the work he's given you. Whatever your task, whatever your calling, whatever your role in life, God has promised to bless you in serving him and serving others as you do it. Do not be anxious. With prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And the God of peace who fills you with all joy and believing will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. With life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. We join together in the profession of faith God grants his people as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty.
from Trinity Lutheran Church in Egypt Mills, who is hospitalized following chest pains. We also include a petition on behalf of the family of Martha Skinner, a relative of the Schwer family, following Martha's death this morning. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Father, you have made manifest to us the word of life, which was with you in the beginning. By proclamation of his life, you have given us fellowship with you and your Son, even Jesus Christ. Keep us in your truth, confessing Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who is the propitiation for our sins, even the sins of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks. For St. John, your holy evangelist, who has given to your church true testimony concerning Christ our Lord, send also to the church in our times faithful pastors who will hear witness, bear witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Bless that man even now you are preparing to send as pastor for Canada. Preserve your church, loved and free from all sin, by Christ's blood, steadfast as a kingdom of priests, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, God of all nations, defend and direct all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Bless and protect our soldiers, police officers, and all who work to keep our communities safe. We remember especially Daniel, Ruth, Zach, Zach, Todd, Zoe, Max, Jim, Paul, Sean, and Stuart. Keep us all from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Bring peace to places where there is discord and disruption. Teach us to grow in virtue and live in peace with everyone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O great physician of body and soul, by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Beverly, Cindy, Audrey, John, Keith, Barry, Sharon, David, Joan, Mike, Charlene, Darlene, Gail, Yvonne, Jack, Mary, Shirley, Maxine, Madonna, Gail. Be with those receiving treatment for cancer and other chronic health problems. In your comfort and strength also to those who mourn, we pray for the families of Pastor Larry Roth and Martha Skinner. Give them your peace and comfort in time of loss and sorrow with the awareness that you never leave nor forsake us even when we are parted one from another by death. Hold them all in your mighty hands. Bring them consolation. Heal them according to your gracious will. And give us all grace to accept and bear our crosses with faith in you that we would always be prepared to depart this life in faith and come to your heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O King of glory, may all who receive the Lord's Supper this day do so in true repentance and faith. Help us to make a good confession of the truth united in this congregation. As we eat and drink your body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, reveal your glory to us by faith, and bind us together with the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we may all be gathered around your throne on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, through your only begotten Son, you will sanctify all your elect and beloved people. Give us grace to follow the example of your saints in faith, love, and hope, that together with them we, have, we may obtain eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation, 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
continue with the singing of the Note de Metis on page 211 in Lutheran service. Joy to the world. 